This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to turn the uh, initial meeting over to uh, uh, Mr. Hayes. Well, you want to announce the new? And uh, yeah, the audit committee meeting and uh, Tim Reagan, uh, Reagan has uh, been appointed to that committee. So he is on that committee. I understand so I can second things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Real bad power response. I'll say. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the April meeting of the Audit Governance and Finance Committees and all of the full board. For members of the public attending remotely, the agendas are available at hrbrrd.newyork.gov under board meetings. We ask that you please close other programs on your computer or phone, silence your cell phone, and mute your audio when not speaking. The conference organizer will monitor the program's chat function for public comment. Our first order of business being the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, invisible, liberty, and justice. Thank you. Now to begin, we have a, a roll call, Mr. Uh, committee Chair Albert Hayes. Here. Committee members Richard Bird. Here. And Timothy Reagan. Here. Uh, board Chair Mark Finkel. Here. Board member Nicole Allen. Here. Uh, committee member Kenneth DeWitt. Here. Board member Alfred J. Candido. Here. Uh, Executive Director John Callahan. Here. General Counsel Robert Leslie here. Chief Engineer Robert Fulton. Here. Chief Fiscal Officer Timothy Manicha. Here. And Director of Administrative Services Stephanie Rizicki. Here. Everybody's accounted for. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to have a motion to adopt or revise the meeting agenda. I'll make that motion. Mr. Reagan? Any second? I'll second that. Making history. Mr. DeWitt? Making history. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. I'd also like to have the approval of the November 7, 2023 Audit Committee meetings minutes. Anybody make, make a motion on that? I'll make that motion. Mr. Reagan? And Mr. Could I have a second? I'll second. Mr. DeWitt? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, under committee business, we have new business. We have motion, and I have a motion to approve in advance to the full board a resolution to award audit services to EFPR Group, LLP. Mr. Manicha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You can find the resolution on page four of your packet. And I emailed the EFPR board uh, uh, EFPR proposal separately as it was uh, resisting our, our best efforts to incorporate it into the board uh, packet. I have a copy uh, of it if I want. As, as I stated uh, in the resolution, uh, we competitively procured this service consistent with the public authorities law requiring rotation of independent auditors. We received and scored three proposals, and I'd like to take this moment to thank our colleagues, Kim Scott and Anna Tracy, for their service and disregard. Uh, EFPR scored highest on a technical basis and was very competitive on cost. For these reasons, we recommend EFPR to the audit committee and in doing so, wish to thank Galeros Robinson for their many years of tireless and excellent service to the regulating district, especially under the very challenging circumstances of the pandemic. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Is there anybody with any questions? Hearing none, could I have a motion to approve to the advance to the full board? I'll make that motion. Mr. Reagan? Okay. Second. Second. Mr. Bird? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, 
would be board, it would be brought to the full board. At this time, we've given motion for an adjournment. I will. Uh, Mr. Bird. I'll second. A second. Mr. Reagan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion is adjourned. Out of 10 4. Thank you. Uh, the next meeting we have is the uh, Finance Committee meeting. Um, and so I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Duet. I'd like to call the Finance Committee meeting to order. Uh, roll call, Mr. Leslie. Committee Chair Ken Duet. Here. Committee members Albert Hayes. Here. And Timothy Reagan. Here. Board Chair Mark Finkel. Here. Board members Richard Bird and Nicole Allen. Here. Board Here. member Albert J. Candido, Jr. Here. Uh, Executive Director John Callahan. Here. General Counsel Robert Leslie here. Chief Fiscal Officer Timothy Manicha. Here. Chief Engineer Robert Fultan. Here. And the Director of Administrative Services Stephanie Rizicki. Here. Uh, everybody accounted for. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a revised meeting agenda. Can I hear a motion? I will make that motion. I'll second that. Mr. Hayes, Mr. Reagan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Um, new business. Uh, uh, approval of March 12, 2024 Financial Committee meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Reagan? Second. I will second that. Mr. Hayes? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion approved. <clears throat> Under new business, motion <clears throat> to advance to the full board and recommend adoption of a resolution approving the financing of the cost of reconstructing, rehabilitating, and modernizing the Indian Lake Dam to the New York State Environmental Facility Corporation Clean Water State Revolution Revolving Fund Program, the issuance of a Hudson River Black River Regulating District Series 2024 bond anticipation note, the 2024 ban to secure construction financing and a series of long-term fixed rate bonds to refinance the 2024 ban on a permanent financing basis. The series 2025 bond adopting and authorizing the execution of a second supplemental indenture providing for the issuance and delivery of the 2024 ban and the series 2025 bonds and appointing manufacturers and traders trust company to ser serve as trustee for the 2024 ban and the series 2025 bonds. Mr. Manucha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You can find the resolution on page 11 of your packet. <clears throat> As you may recall from our meeting last month, the regulating district has been engaged in a process for obtaining financing for the Indian Lake Dam Rehabilitation Project with the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation for quite some time. The regulating district board, in accordance with statute and EFC's review process, is required to consider and approve many documents as part of this process. It adopted the first of these last summer, and we bring two more to you today. The first of today's documents is this item, a bond resolution, which as the title suggests, serves as the formal authorization to enter into this financing arrangement. It contains four sections that reference the nature of the obligation, cap it in size and term, refer to an even more detailed document, which we will take up next, authorize continued use of M&T Bank as trustee, and gives me authority to execute the documents with EFC when they are finalized. And so I'm happy to pause and answer any questions you have about this bond resolution. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, can I have a motion? I will make that motion. Mr. Hayes? I'll second it. Mr. Reagan? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. 
The next motion is to advance to the full board and recommend adoption of the second supplemental indenture in the form presented to the board to implement the authorizations contained in the board bond resolution. Mr. Manucha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The second supplemental indenture found on page 15 of your packet serves as the implementing document for the bond resolution. This is a contract between the regulating district and MIT, the trustee, who acts on behalf of the note and bond holders, which in this case is EFC. It spells out as clearly as is possible at this point in the process, the terms and conditions under which the regulating district will issue these bond anticipation notes and eventually the bonds when the project at Indian Lake is actually completed and the short-term financing is converted to long-term debt. We are indebted to Duran Barlavav, our bond counsel at Harris Beach and Rob Leslie, our general counsel for their work on these documents. This is not a formal resolution as, as the last one was, but we ask you uh, to approve this document so the trustee and so EFC knows exactly what we are pledging to do with respect to this financing. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has about this. I have none. If there are no questions, can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Mr. Reagan. Second. I'll second that. Mr. Hayes. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Mr. Chairman, that's uh, $10.4 million and rising. Okay, is there a, we need a motion to, uh, to adjourn. Yeah, we do. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. I will second that. Mr. Reagan, Mr. All Hayes. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion approved. Very good, thank you very much. All right, 10 11. Yeah. Uh, next, the Governance Committee meeting. Um, committee Chair Al Candido. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I call the Governance Committee meeting to order. Roll call, please, Mr. Leslie. Committee Chair Alfred J. Candido, Jr. Here. Committee Member Kenneth DeWitt. Here. Uh, committee Member Albert Hayes. Here. And Nicole Allen. Here. Board Chair Mark Finkel. Here. Board Members Richard Bird. Here. And Timothy Reagan. Here. Executive Director John Callahan. Here. General Counsel Robert Leslie. Uh, here. Chief Engineer <coughs> Robert Fultan. Here. Chief Fiscal Officer Timothy Manicha. Here. And the Director of Administrative Services Stephanie Rizicki. Present. Everybody's accounted for. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. I need a motion to adopt and re or revise the meeting agenda. I'll make that motion. Uh, do we want to discuss uh, rules for implementation of the uh, solar panels and charging stations? That would be a new item in this agenda, Mr. Reagan. Yeah, we want to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, after just driving home last time, I thought about um, we probably ought to have some sort of rules or regulations on the charging station outside, um, more so for the people here that if there's an issue or complaint, they have something to go by to take care of those types of issues and resolve them. So, yeah. Mr. Secretary, you'd be looking for a motion to revise that motion. discussion. Yes, exactly. So are they making that motion? Uh, yes. I make that motion. How many charging stations are there? I, I, I just uh, want to ask uh, Mr. DeWitt if, if that question is in order until we revise the agenda and enter into that right. discussion. Uh, right. I need a second. I need a second on that motion to include this new item in the agenda. I'll second it. Okay. With that, we have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any any opposed? No. 
Thank you. And now, now the agenda is complete with two items, correct? Correct. So next we need the approval of the March 12th, 2024 Governance Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Mr. DeWitt? I'll second. second. Ms. Allen? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. So now we have the new business in front of us. The first is was included in the packet. It's a res we have in front of us a resolution authorizing the executive director to execute agreement by and between the Hudson River Black River Regulating District and the Civil Service Employees Association Inc. AFSCME Local 1000. The AFL CIO. Hudson River, Black River Regulating District Local 120. Mr. Callahan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My memo in support of this item appears on page 47 of your packets with the proposed MOU and with CSEA incorporating the elements of the proposed agreement. The resolution itself appears on page 51. As the board is aware, it authorized the new CBA, a collective bargaining agreement with CSEA in July of 2021 which expires at the end of this June. Uh, management has been negotiating with CSEA for the past six months on a new agreement. I'd like to thank Tim Anicia and Stephanie Rizicki for lending their collective time and talents to this, this effort. I'd also like to thank uh, Union President Danielle Thorne uh, and the whole uh, CSEA leadership team uh, for negotiating in good faith uh, with us over, over that period of time. Uh, March 29th, uh, management and CSEA reached a tentative agreement incorporating a one-time payment of $3,000, which is <coughs> added to base salary, uh, raises of 3% uh, or 158 an hour for the labor position in the uh, initial year of uh, effective July 1st, 2024, 2.75% 2 effective July 1st, 2025, and 3% effective uh, July 1st, 2026. Uh, increases to employee health insurance premiums for new employees to 16 and 31 percent for individual and family coverage, respectively, which aligns it with uh, where the state workforce is, uh, typically with those uh, contributions, and an increase of the work boot uh, reimbursement allowance uh, from the current level of 150 uh, to $200. Uh, we believe this represents a fair and reasonable agreement for the next three years. And I'd ask the boards uh, for uh, support for its adoption of this measure. Following any discussion and questions uh, the members may have, uh, for which I will now pause. Thank I, you, Mr. Killing. Are there any questions or discussion items? Jack, when I read this, and maybe I, I read it wrong on the thing um, of going through there. So for retiree, the uh, um, eyeglass and a couple things there. Those are thrown out now. Those are not included. They, they were not added to this. Uh, th those were there. There were several um, um, additional benefits that the union wanted to negotiate for itself. Uh, and if it's um, it's and, and those are among the items that are not reflected in this MOU and have not been added to the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, you, you'll recall there were some other uh, requests relative to longevity pay. Um, and, and certainly um, a, um, an in, a request for much higher increases than, than, um, than we arrived at. But there were a number of things that, that the union sought that they did not get. I, I was glad to not see that part. Not that I don't like people getting those benefits and stuff. It has nothing to do with that. It's that long-term liability that we have and the amount of money that is required when you take a look at the budget on an annual basis, that number keeps ticking up. And so, good. Any other questions? My only question was um, it, just to make sure I understood. There's no gaps in this. It looks like it's seamless from the end of the the previous agreement. Uh, yes, following the boards, if the board uh, adopts the MOU, uh, we will be able to finalize and execute uh, with the board's approval a new agreement prior to the expiration of the existing agreement uh, at the end of June this year. And we'll anticipate the chairman signing that on the regulating district behalf, uh, probably, I would imagine, within the next four to six weeks. 
Thank you. Any other questions by anyone? Do we have a motion to accept this resolution and pass it on to the full board? I'll make that I'll motion. Make, she goes. Miss Allen? I'll second. Mr. DeWitt? All in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Any abstain? So ordered. Thank you. The second item for new business would be a discussion. Do we actually have a resolution of a plan or no. we're just merely going to discuss it? It would be just a discussion. I, I would recommend that. Um, I, I guess my thought would be we probably ought to get some put together something to say, OK, here's a starting point for that of, of going forward, just to keep it simple of going forward uh, but th that's all i was i was just thinking hey i think there's a potential for issues somebody in the front office here is going to have to answer somebody that it wasn't the way they thought it should be or something and we ought to have guidelines <laughs> yeah, and, and they should be posted when you put up the uh, uh, you know having had to do that you know you pull up to an electric station and there's all these rules no more than two hours you know, you have to, and, and it needs to be, you know, no leaving the car here overnight. No. And, you know, and since we're putting in a level two, it's going to take a while if somebody is like really needs a charge, you know, and so, you know, I can see them coming in, plugging them in at night and leaving. So I think we, what we would recommend, uh, right, Counselor, is, is a, the board adopting a formal policy, which you would consider it two consecutive meetings. Is that right, Counselor? Three? Three. Uh, in, in incorporating the elements that the board would like to see, and certainly uh, when those are up, uh, uh, reflecting that in some right. some some standard signage that you see at other locations. I know Mr. DeWitt had had a question about the number of charger chargers, and uh, Mr. DeWitt, it would be uh, two chargers in the uh, the visitor uh, lot, uh, which is uh, just outside the door here. Uh, that would be a, a single pedestal with charging units in, in the middle of two spots, a charging unit on either side, a similar configuration in the employee uh, parking lot so that there would be two spots that are charger equipped. And then we would have a single charger inside the maintenance garage for any future uh, electric uh, vehicle that we have in our own fleet for a total of five, two of which would be accessible and how, how much how much uh, does the state pick up on that are, are you asking if there is a financial contribution uh, from the state of New York itself yes there is not there are uh, there are incentives and rebates available for the initial outlay uh, of expense, and uh, we'd have to go back and get you those answers. Part of that is a federal uh, incentive program, and it's through, I think, uh, Tim through the IRS, but it's not, it's a direct payment. Yes, called direct pay, and, and will require us to do some uh, things that we haven't done in the past to, to attempt to draw down uh, that uh, assistance. And there are some other state level uh, incentives that the, that the manufacturer uh, applies for as well. And at the end of the day, it comes off of our bills. But prospectively, you know, it, at, after, after, the, after the infrastructure is installed, there's no ongoing separate level of support or reimbursement. In, in Florida, what they what the state does is they pay for anything that's uh, outside the garage. If you wanted to put a unit in your own garage, then you would have to pay for it yourself. The the incentives are uh, enumerated on page 56 in the minutes from the last meeting, uh, authorizing where the board has already authorized. Uh, the expenditure for the installation of the rooftop solar and EV charging stations. I would uh, be pleased to, uh, to 
see that they're not plugging in for overnight and so on and so forth. Well, we don't have uh, we don't have staff here overnight, and we do not have a vehicular gate that we close off of Parker Hill Road. Uh, we will know uh, again through the through the app uh, that is uh, uh, that will be uh, part of this charging unit. Uh, <clears throat> What the usage will be, and if there is usage after hours, then you know we would um, show we, we would show. Frankly, uh, in talking to other other agencies, uh, we would be surprised uh, if if uh, we we started to see that level of use. Uh, number one, because of the relative dearth at this point of electrical vehicles in this area, and the inconvenience of taking them. Some places, as the chairman has indicated, this is not a high-speed charger. Um, so it's your kind of regular run-of-the-mill. I'm going into the grocery store. I'm going to the state park, and as long as I'm here, I'll park in. I'll plug in and, and keep my battery charged. But, um, but as as uh, I think Mr. Reagan has pointed out, you know, develop, developing a, a policy will help identify measures that we would take. If, if that were to become an issue. Right. Yeah, you know, in a, in a level two charge, if somebody were to pull in and they were without charging, you're talking about a six, seven hour charging mode because it's not a level three. So I mean, you can't need, say they would need a ride to this, get here, right? You're not they would need a ride to walk right. here, uh, walk from here after they've right. put their car in uh, to. And you know, get there's to, none of this. Well, yeah, like while, while I'm here, Signing up for my, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to give them two minutes. <laughs> the, the other side of that coin, though, is people do come visit up here. Mm -hmm. And if they forgot their charger or yeah. something, I don't, I'm sure there's other charging stations around the lake somewhere. I just don't know where they are. Right. I mean, but I, that, that's awesome. You keep in mind the rules. Don't say, well, two hours is the. <clears throat> do that. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I, and I should have noted also that we do have. Um, as the board approved last year, we do have 24-hour uh, uh, security camera footage that also um, shows those clearly shows those parking spots as well. So then the question, that, I just another one, a question at night or something when nobody's in the employee parking lot, if, can I come and put in there if there's nobody in there and this one's full? I mean, those are just things that I could see potentially coming up as discussion points. And, uh, and, I, and I, so the, the, again, the feedback that we've gotten from some, some, some of the other agencies, especially in this part of the world, and there are not, I mean, I, um, the chairman has just switched from an EV to a hybrid, and this might be reflected in, in this comment that there, there are not a, a you know, sort of a plethora of, of electric vehicle charging stations around. There are a few public stations in, in Northville. Uh, but I don't think very many, and I don't think there's been, uh, they have been, uh, you know, lined up around the block to use it. So uh, other publicly available stations have not seen the level of use that would suggest that we'll get uh, a lot of people just sort of, you know, carpooling over here and leaving a vehicle overnight. But that is certainly not the intent of providing this infrastructure. And if, uh, if they began to be used in that way, I think the board would certainly want to take uh, steps to curtail that. And, and to your point, Mr. Reagan, uh, the best way to probably do that is to have a, a clear and concise policy in advance. So, um, you know, in terms of the, uh, the discussions we've been having about what the, what the usage rules should be, we can put that into a proposal. Uh, for the board with the board's input. I was just going to say, so, since we've heard the input, um, I think the, the governance committee should come up with a, with a set of guidelines for us to approve and change and modify um, in next meeting. Okay. At the, at the Amsterdam Muni Golf Course, they have several uh, charging stations, and uh, I, I've never seen a, an electric car plugged in there. I've only seen gas-powered uh, vehicles parked in those spots. 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, 10 minutes. Yeah, so I just wanted to clarify, revise and extend as the, as the terminology goes, something I said a minute ago. Uh, the, there are incentives that pertain to the EV charging uh, station. The one that was included as a possibility in the Solar Liberty proposal that the board <clears throat> is something called a National Grid Charge Ready Incentive. Uh, so the, 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 the items that we were talking about previously really pertain to the rooftop solar and, and uh, not to the not to the EV charging. Uh, we we because of the uncertainty regarding all these incentives, we asked the board to approve, you know, the what we think is the, the maximum amount that, that it could cost. And then if we're successful in obtaining these uh, this assistance, then obviously it'll cost us uh, less. But because of the uncertainty, we asked for the authority for the full amount. Okay. If I may, I would like to ask Mr. Callahan and the staff to provide the committee with a boilerplate do research. It sounds like you've done some informal research. Um, I, I want to see what the best practices are for agencies or businesses that are facing these same decisions. And the the second, I wanted to add to the discussion that any, I caution, anytime we create a policy that cannot be enforced, I look at that as it, it's a flawed policy. So uh, I'm not sure how the staff would enforce, uh, if you exceed whatever time limit you put on a sign. It's just like right now, do you have a sign out at the parking lot that says there's no overnight parking? Now, what if your security camera picks up a car that's there for four hours in the middle of the night? Does a staff person go over, call for a private tow truck, and tow that vehicle out of the parking lot at the owner's expense? What would you do if there was a charger station with a vehicle parked in it for four hours instead of two hours? All these are just things I throw out to be discussed as you make rules, unless there's a way to deactivate the charger. Yeah. I don't know there how is. these chargers work. So yeah. when you reach a certain hour of the day, do you just deactivate the charger and just turn it back on when you reach business hours? So, and these are these are procedures that comes out of our policy. So if, if, that, if they're capable of turning on and off, then Go ahead and create any time limit you want, and then the staff just gets a procedure to deactivate and to activate at the right times. Yeah, we just know we do we do have that ability, and also the ability to change it to a to a pay or pay model. And we've talked about we've talked about with the board when it adopted the, the measure, uh, the possibility that we we could through we already accept credit card payments through Avalon, through the permit system, and we would just have to look at linking that somehow to this app that is uh, widely and commonly used uh, throughout the industry. So that's another tool in the toolbox to regulate use is to just change the model from what we had envisioned based on the level of use to something different if the level of use is far different from what we expected. Al, I totally agree with what you said about the policy and have to enforce it. And if you can't, what are you going to do? My, my only my only thought on that was, I can envision it should never happen, but I just can envision uh, a problem coming out of there with two or three people arguing about it, coming to the front desk here, and somebody's got to try to say what the rules and regulations are. And that's the only thing I'm trying to do is make sure that they've got something. That they say these are our rules and regulations uh, you about to handle it. And you post it right there with the yeah. charger. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've seen any number of different where the rate ch changes. You know, you put in your credit card and the rate changes after X number of hours. You know, you get two hours at one rate and then the rate jumps up uh, if the car's still plugged in after X number of hours. <clears throat> Well, are these charging stations, again, this is a question I, I don't know the answer to. I, I'd like to hear the answer. Are the charging stations, can you calibrate a charging station so that it can't charge after the two-hour limit or whatever hour limit you set? 
that el eliminates another one of what we anticipate as an abusive situation. If you can set, dial it in, it only, you only get a two hour charge. That's it. And you can't get anything more. So now there's no incentive to try to get and park it there for a long period of time to get a full charge. Now, my understanding of uh, this app, which I do not have, and I don't have an electric vehicle, and I have never used an electric vehicle charger. So I uh, consider the source and take it with a grain of salt. But you will actually, you will not manipulate the controls on the pedestal itself when you plug in. You will go to your phone and you will enter in the information from the pedestal. And it is that app that allows that pedestal to begin charging your car. And as the owner of the pedestal and as a subscriber to the app, we can uh, set, as I understand it, whatever rules, whether it's cost, time, turn it on, turn it off. Okay. I think we have um, a tremendous amount of tools in our toolbox once the board adopts the, the, the rules and regulations and policy that it would like to adopt. I, I'm, okay. I'm confident we won't have to, you know, station here, station somebody here overnight to watch that. I think we can program uh, the, the pedestal or the app more, pres more precisely uh, in accordance with what the board wants to adopt. So it's a smart app. It, well, yeah. smarter than me, I think, Mr. Ray. <laughs> Put it that way. Well, then that, that, that answers my questions. Thank you. Then whatever time restrictions we put on this from an a po internal policy. It's just how that app gets programmed uh, so that it, that's fine. Thank you. So we, you'll be able to put all this together for the next meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other input, discussion, questions? Fine, thank you. Then we table this until the next uh, meeting. We have an actual written resolution in front of us. So that being the case, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. Second. All in favor of adjournment. Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, the gavel is back to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the uh, board meeting, the April board meeting of the Hudson River Black River Regulating District. Uh, roll call, Mr. Leslie. Uh, we are in at 1037. Board Chair Mark Finkel. Here. Board Members Albert Hayes. Here. Richard Bird. Here. Timothy Reagan. Here. Nicole Allen. Here. Uh, Kenneth DeWitt. Here. Alfred Candido. Here. Executive Director John Callahan. General Counsel Robert Leslie. Here. Chief Engineer Robert Fultan. Chief Fiscal Officer Timothy Manicha. And the Director Here. of Administrative Services Stephanie Rizicki. Here. Here. All accounted for. Very good, thank you. I need a motion to adopt the meeting agenda. I'll make that motion. You have a second? <laughs> Mr. Reagan, any, Mr. Bird. Any additions, corrections? And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, no guess. Um, public comment, uh, is there anybody, and we have nobody in the building, is there anybody out in Zoom land that, needs, that would like to uh, address the board? With that, no public comment. And we need uh, approval of the March 12th regular board meeting minutes. <coughs> motion to approve. I'll, I'll make, make the motion. Mr. DeWitt. Any second? I second that. Mr. Hayes. Any discussion, changes, corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? <clears throat> Next, we're down to report of our executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report appears on pages 68 and 69 of the packet. One thing that you will not see in that report is the fact that today is Robert Falcon's birthday. Okay. Here. Oh. Uh, that means it's also Jennifer Callahan's birthday, so a little shout out to her. Uh, but we, uh, we certainly wish the chief engineer a very happy birthday and many happy returns. Thank you. Uh, one thing that has not been returned yet uh, is the a new budget for the state of New York. So mm -hmm. uh, the CFO and, and I and the entire team continue to see white smoke. I continue to wait to see white smoke uh, emanating from the Capitol, but 
As the board is aware, we are uh, keenly interested in the details uh, of that adopted state budget as the governor's budget proposal uh, included some, some more good news for the regulating district. So certainly hope uh, by the next time we gather, uh, we'll be able to report uh, some news on that. Uh, the only other thing I'll just remind the board that on uh, May 16th, that will be after our next meeting, but I just wanted to, to reiterate uh, that we'll be hosting the uh, annual safe voting press conference here at Sacramento Field Office, 10.30 a.m. on May 16th for any members of the board that are able to join. That's our local emergency responders, the sheriff's departments, New York State, DEC, and other emergency response personnel uh, to emphasize the conjunction with Safe Voting Week, um, the importance of voting safety on not just Great Sacramento Lake, but area uh, waterways. And just want to also note that we hope to get our uh, spring, winter spring edition of the newsletter out by the end of the week. So look for that in your inboxes as well. Uh, with that, in recognition of the robust agenda, I'll just pause for any questions or comments the members may have. Any other comments, um, <clears throat> questions for the uh, director, Mr. Callahan? Okay, we will move on to contract and actions. Um, first thing is resolution to extend contract C022021, awarding work to perform a light detection and ranging. I hate reading this. <laughs> um, I lost my place. So a light detection and ranging survey program at Conklinville Dam, the MJ Engineering and Land Surveying. PC. Mr. Fulton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my memorandum supporting the resolution uh, to extend the contract is on page 70. For the past three years, MJ Engineering has completed the topographic survey of the crest and the embankment at Conklinville Dam. Work's being completed, or has been completed, uh, and, and will continue uh, with the passage of this resolution. Uh, in response to Federal Energy Regulatory Commission uh, recommendation to monitor the uh, surface and topography of Conklinville Dam. And MJ Engineering and Land Surveying completed the work over the last three years very effectively and responsibly. And so staff recommends extending the contract with MJ Engineering and Land Surveying PC to continue the annual LIDAR survey work for the 2024-2026 period. That would be three annual, uh, three in total annual uh, surveys, uh, similar to the previous three years. Uh, I've included and attached the full proposal and the regulating district staff recommends acceptance of MJ Engineering and Land Surveying PC's proposal to provide LIDAR survey services and seeks board authorization to extend contract C02-2021 for three years and authorization for the executive director to execute an amendment to the agreement term and increase the contract value by $22,500 to a not to exceed amount of $42,000. We have a motion to uh, extend the contract. Just so I understand the, the costing there. So the three years, we're going from 22.5 to 42. Is that an increased price or is that just additional years? Uh, it is, It is. well, it's both. The the 22.5 represents the next three-year effort of the annual surveys. The previous was uh, 19.5 for the, the first three years from 21 to 24. So this particular set of three years, three yeah. annual surveys will so cost up twenty-two thousand uh, percent. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. I need a motion on the table. I'll make that motion. We have a second, Mr. Reagan. Second, Mr. Bird. Now, is there any further discussion on this proposal? Okay, if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions? 
motion carries. Next, resolution authorizing the expenditure of $6,178.78 for repair of Caterpillar backhoe loader. Mr. Callahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This resolution appears on page 76 of your packets. As indicated, uh, 1997, uh, backhoe suffered damage to the hydraulic ram assembly on the right outrigger while being operated at Confidence Dam. Staff assessed the damage and concluded that the repairs could not be completed in house. Uh, based on staff's initial assessment, Milton Cat uh, estimated the repairs to be approximately $1,000, which would have been uh, below the threshold for board approval. Upon disassembly, Milton Cat identified a previously undetected damage within the RAM assembly itself, uh, increasing the cost of the repairs to $6,178.78 which is above the $5,000 threshold necessitating board approval. Uh, we'll pause here for any questions the members may have. Otherwise, we appreciate the support. Just, just a question. The, the failure or the the damage was caused by, was there a root cause? What? Was it training? Was it, I mean? So we talked to uh, Matt Ginter, but it wasn't really operator error. It is a, it's an old machine. We also have, we're, uh, Mr. Manich and I were, were down there looking at this morning. In fact, uh, there's an issue with the with the boom itself. The boom has uh, some travel in it, uh, but the but the, the piece that would need to be replaced there is a single cast piece. It is a almost 30 year old piece of equipment, uh, so that the it wasn't really attributed to operator error. It was just a so the operator was trained and yes. knew how to operate it and all that. That so was not an issue. No, I would say, Mr. Reagan, you chalk this up to, to try to keep what is overall um, a pretty good piece of equipment running. Uh, the, uh, there was damage. Uh, I'll just use this in, as an example uh, to one of the one of the windows, the machine. We replaced that in the house for about $100 a few months ago, as opposed to $4,000 or some astronomical, mm -hmm. astronomical number if we set it out. So um, I, I think this is. When you when you think about replacement costs, probably being throw it out there maybe one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We'd like to keep this equipment going and repair as it comes up. This was thought to be a pretty minor damage to the ram itself, but as they took the ram assembly apart, there are a couple of ears, I guess, for lack of a better word, inside that were bent over and could not be replaced. Otherwise, they did uh, reuse a lot of that assembly and only replace what they to, but uh, it's like, I guess, taking anything apart and putting it back together, it's, these days especially, it seems like it's always costing more than you expect it to. But in this case, the, the increase uh, from the estimate was directly precipitated by the fact that our staff made an assessment based on what they could see once, it, once everything came apart. The, the extent of the damage was increased. Oh, we're in tear, right? <laughs> Well, we've had this discussion, but right now I need a resolution authorizing this expenditure of $6,178.78 to repair the backhoe. I need a motion. I'll make that motion. I need a second. Mr. DeWitt. I'll second it. Mr. DeWitt, Mr. Reagan. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Next, we move to staff and committee reports. Uh, the audit committee, Mr. Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee had met in, we had on the reports there, the audit committee. We had a resolution to award audit services work to EEEF PR Group LLP. Do I have a motion for that? I'll make that motion. Mr. Reagan. Is there a second? Any further discussion? That all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Um, was that enough? Somebody opposed? No, oh, okay. okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Hayes. If not, Finance Committee report, Mr. DeWitt. Uh, I have a resolution approving the finance of the cost of reconstructing, rehabilitating, and modernizing the Indian Lake Dam through the New York State Environmental Facilities Corporation Clean Water State Revolving Fund Program. The issuance of a Hudson River Black River Regulating District Series 
2024 bond anticipation note, the 2024 ban to secure construction financing and a series of long-term fixed rate bonds to refinance the 2024 ban on a permanent finance basis, the series 2025 bonds, adopting and authorizing the execution of a second supplemental indenture providing for the issuance and delivery of the 2024 ban and the series 2025 bonds and appointing manufacturers and traders trust company <clears throat> to serve as trustee for the 2024 ban and the series 2025 bonds, the bond resolution. And since uh, everyone was involved in the uh, finance committee meeting, uh, no, uh, no questions uh, asked. If there are any, uh, please uh, make that now. If not, can I have a resolution or a motion? We have a motion to accept. I'll make that motion. Ms. Allen? We have a second? We'll second that. Mr. Okay. Hayes? Any further <clears throat> questions, issues? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, Mr. DeWitt. Um, I have a motion to approve and adopt a second, second supplemental indenture in the form presented to the board to implement the authorization contained in the bond resolution. Again, uh, everyone was in the uh, finance committee meeting. Uh, if there's any other questions or comments. We have that motion. I'll make that motion. We have a second. Mr. Reagan. Any, second. I'm sorry. Second that. Mr. Hayes. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Dwight. Uh, next, Governance Committee. Mr. Candido. Mr. Chairman, the committee approved for advance to the board read the resolution that authorized the executive director to execute an agreement by and between Hudson River, Black River Regulating District and the Civil Service Employees Association, Inc., AFSCME, Local 1000, AFL-CIO, Hudson River, Black River Regulating District, Local 120. We have a motion to accept the contract. I will make that motion. Mr. Hayes. We have a second. I'll second that. Mr. Okay, again, any further questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And again, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Callahan and Mr. Mucci for, uh, and I'm sure Mr. Leslie for getting that together. Hmm? And Stephanie, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, my apology. We want to thank everybody for getting that together. It's a big job. Um, staff report, general counsel, Mr. Lester. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to offer a reminder to everybody that financial disclosure statements will be due on May 15th. Uh, you will receive an email from the Commission on Ethics and Government. Um, ethics and lobbying in government. Uh, if you have any questions or need help uh, filling out that form or submitting, give me a call and I'll help walk you through it. Uh, I continue, in, continue to engage with the General Recoveries Unit of the OAG Civil Recoveries Bureau regarding the commencement of an affirmative case seeking redress against Erie Boulevard. Uh, the General Recoveries Unit has delivered its own demand uh, to Erie on March 15th uh, to be followed in several months, barring Erie's payment of the approximately $1.9 million demanded uh, with a summons and complaint. Uh, the Executive Director, the Chief Fiscal Officer, and myself have continued to engage with representatives from Stillwater Associates regarding the contractual language uh, memorializing our purchase of the hydroelectric plant at Stillwater. I'd like to thank Stephanie for uh, 
continuing that process uh, with currently the AG uh, back and forth uh, over particular language that they would like to see in that agreement. Um, and I believe we got the RFP out. Yes. Uh, issue for you, I believe. Uh, seeking willing and capable uh, operators who are willing to uh, run the plant once we take ownership. Uh, other than that, in the interest of time, I will concede the balance of my half hour. <laughs> Very good. Any questions for uh, Mr. Leslie? Discussion? Okay, Director of Administrative Services, Mr. Zicke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report is located on page 79. During the recording period, I performed quarterly compliance audits in the Hudson River area and the Black River area offices and monthly audits of the access permit database at the Saginaw Field Office. In all instances, I was able to determine proper procedures are in place and staff are adhering to established guidelines. I managed the onboarding process for our junior employees. Kevin and Mark were hired as maintenance specialists at the Saginaw Field Office. Welcome aboard. Kevin and Mark, you see them, uh, take time to say hello to them. We received our MWBE report card. Report cards are designed to gauge the effectiveness and success of an agency's or authority's MWBE efforts during the second and third quarter of fiscal year 22-23. I'm pleased to report that we received an A for our efforts. On pages 80 through 82 are the contract status reports. They are included in the board packet for your review and satisfy the public requirement. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. It's not technically time for it. Very good. Um, any questions, comments? Thank you very much. Um, next, um, Chief Fiscal Officer, Mr. Vija. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You can find the CFO report on page 83 of your packet. I'm happy to report that regulating district's cash position remains strong with combined bank deposits and short-term investment pool investments, roughly 2% higher than they were at the same time last year. Year-to-date net revenue is not nearly as positive as it was last year, largely due to the absence of nearly $1.2 million the regulating district would have received from Erie Boulevard Hydropower had they not walked away from the agreement that had been in existence for many decades. As the morning has been largely devoted to financial matters, I'll pause there and uh, offer to answer any questions you have about the regulating district's finances. Any questions for Mr. Manita? Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Engineer, Mr. Fulkan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report begins on page 105. Uh, Typical with this time of the year, we saw an increase in inflow uh, and precipitation in, in our watersheds, and uh, reservoirs continue to refill uh, toward the end of the month of March, and now into April, uh, that's dropped off. The rate at which they've started, to, or rate at which they've refilled, is dropped off a little bit, but uh, we still have um, storage capacity to receive the uh, historic average inflow and uh, anticipate refilling consistent with our historic uh, refill end of May at, uh, at all our reservoirs. And, uh, we have to take any questions if you have any on the operation. Any questions, comments? How's the work coming at uh, Indian Lake? See all these it, it is these moving pictures, along. So it's pretty good. Um, yep. There we, I also included that summary. Um, they continue to drill and drought and um, make some headway in terms of repair at our bulkhead gate structure. Uh, and we expect actually this, this month to see the uh, as a work in the gate uh, the bulk at gate uh, structure uh, advance a little bit more quickly as they uh, 
complete some dewatering efforts of that area. Any other comments, questions for our uh, engineer? Move on, any other board member questions and comments? And I need a resolution for our next board meeting, which is May 14th. Should be in the Black River area. And it should be in the Black River area. Possibly. Yeah. Make a motion. We have a second? Second. Mr. Hayes, Mr. Bird. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And finally, a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. I'll second that. <laughs> Mr. Reagan, Mr. Hayes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you. We are adjourned. 11 o'clock on the dot. Yeah.